Okay, this sermon is entitled, Done, Not Do. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 32 reads, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. Now, biblical Christianity is predicated on the simple fact that in salvation, God does all the work. And this pseudo-Christianity, this counterfeit, that would be Calvinism, Arminianism, and Lordship, they teach that salvation is about what we do. And the reason why they, they believe this is because they have not trusted in what Jesus Christ has done. You can't trust in two different things when it comes to salvation. It's one or the other. And the Bible makes it very clear that when it comes to salvation, it's all about what Jesus did at the cross and nothing else. So let's take a look at some verses on this. Turn over to John chapter 1. Now notice the emphasis is always on what Jesus did in these verses. Let's take a look at John 1 29 and it reads, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now notice it says he takes away the sins of the world. See these unsaved devils, these false prophets out there have it completely backwards. They believe you have to take away your own sins. You have to turn from your sins and stop sinning when in reality Jesus Christ took away the sin of the whole world. We see this concept again in John chapter 19. It reads in verse 30, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So this tells us that Jesus Christ finished our salvation. There's nothing left for us to do except receive it by faith alone in Christ alone. Turn back to John chapter 17. We see this concept again in several verses. It reads in verse 2, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Notice the emphasis is on what he does. He gives eternal life. It continues in verse 3, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Once again, the emphasis is on what Jesus Christ has done. He finished the work at Calvary. Let's turn over to Ephesians chapter 2. We see this concept again. Now, the reason why this is so important is because this is how you can differentiate or discern which teaching is correct. When it comes to a false prophet or a true free grace believer, the false prophet will always be putting the emphasis on what we do, whether it's to be saved, to stay saved, or to prove you're saved. It's never on what Jesus did. It just reads, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, what does it say about us? It just says that we are dead in trespasses and sins. Okay, We have nothing to offer. We have no merit. But it says he quickened us. In other words, he gave us a rebirth. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 1. It reads in verse 1. Let's stop at verse 3 and it reads, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Look at the key words here. Jesus Christ by himself purged our sins. This completely refutes purgatory, and it also refutes the idea that we have anything to contribute in our salvation. Let's take a look at one more verse on this. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 9. It reads in verse 12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Once again, the world believes our salvation is based on what we do. In biblical Christianity, it's based on what Jesus Christ has done. He's obtained eternal redemption for us. So our part in salvation is to be a sinner. His part is to be the Savior. We're saved by grace through faith alone, in Christ alone, plus nothing. And free grace theology is the only way God gets all the credit and all the glory. And it's because we believe that our salvation is based on what Jesus Christ has done, not on what we do, like the stupid, unsaved, grace-hating world. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.